leader. I've done a lot of leading, I've done a lot of training, but I was a squad lead for about two of those three years. I spent a lot of time leading squads for Rage, Yami, Kidney, Sokar himself. I have led a lot of great squads for a lot of great leaders. I assume that most of the people here are interested in moving up in leadership, becoming platoon leads and moving up in ranks and everything like that. And I firmly believe that being a good squad leader is the first step to that. You need to master that before you can step in and start being the platoon leader. Because squads are basically little platoons. Um, you're part of a whole. Um, squad leading is simple and complicated all at the same time. A lot of that depends on your platoon lead, your squad, what they're capable of, what you're capable of. Um, but the biggest thing in squad leading, like the number one thing that you need to do as a squad lead, um, is herd your cats. That's how I like to say it. Herd your freaking cats. Keep control of your pl your squad. Make sure everybody's where they're supposed to be. Make sure people are doing what they're supposed to be doing, not off across the map farming in a bio lab. The biggest irritation to a platoon lead, and I say this with confidence, the biggest irritation to a platoon lead is seeing somebody stuck in a bio lab farming when you're not there. And a platoon lead then having to step in, you know, when they're in one squad and somebody in another squad saying, Bravo 2, get out of the bio lab, we're not there, join the platoon. They shouldn't be doing that. You as a squad lead should be herding your cats and making sure that your people are where they need to be. The platoon lead has 12 million other things to worry about. They're thinking five steps ahead. And if they're having to watch your squad to make sure people are where they're supposed to be, that takes time off of what they're supposed to be doing as a platoon leader. So that's going to irritate them greatly. Trust me. Um, squads can be incredibly efficient in platoons. With the right squad leaders and the right people in those squads, they can run almost as four independent platoons. Um, I've seen a lot of platoon leaders that start a serious platoon with something like that with their chosen three squad leads because a platoon leader should be a squad lead and running things and they can basically operate almost as a full platoon. I have been part of squads that have gone and taken bases or defended bases in four to one, five to one pop just because of how organized and efficient they are. But not all platoon leads are looking for that from you. And as SKL, our platoons are public. So you're not going to always get that kind of cohesion that you're going to get in other outfits platoons like VKTZ or Prey or B-Way that run specific ops that have the organized. But with the right squad lead, the right squad members, you can absolutely do it. It's possible. I've been part of that. I've led those squads. So it's possible. It's not a guarantee, but it is possible. Um, but your important job as a squad leader is to be help to the platoon leader. Don't be a drain. Don't give them more work than they already have, like letting your cats run all over the place. Make sure your people are where they're supposed to be. Make sure that, you know, you can hear command chat. If the platoon leader's in command chat trying to listen to something and people in your squad are talking, calm it down. Say, guys, clear comms. Platoon lead's in command. And just make sure that your squad is shutting up so the platoon lead can hear what's going on in command. Because that's oftentimes very important. Um... You know, don't hijack your squads. Don't just decide you're going to take them over here and do this. No matter what the platoon lead wants, that's not good. That's not allowed. That's going to get you in trouble. Um, at that, by that same token, don't just take your squad and leave the platoon. That's a big no-no too. That'll get you in trouble again. That squad does not belong to you. That squad belongs to the platoon leader. You're just happening to guide that squad for the moment. That's it. Um, make sure beacons are up. Make sure people are having fun. You know, chatter's great. We all want to talk and have fun and everything, but if it's getting out of control where nobody can hear the platoon lead, get control of your squad. Calm it down. You know, cut it off. Make sure people are listening to what they need to be doing. That's a big thing, and I am seeing a lot of that lately. Um, people can't hear the platoon lead because everybody is talking. Five people are talking at once, and nobody can hear what's going on, which is especially important in alerts. You know, if it's before the alert, you guys are setting up, you can get away with a little bit more chatter, but especially during alerts, it's important that people are focusing on what's going on on the goal to get things done. Um, and there's, it, it's hard. A lot of times it's very, very hard to hear the platoon leader when you've got everybody talking about weapons and, and camo and 
and vehicles and what's the best this, what's the best that, it makes it very, very difficult to get anything done within a platoon. And I don't know if anybody, any of you, many of you have been in my platoons, but there's chatter when there can be chatter, but when it comes to an alert, I am dead serious, 100%. We're down to business, and you don't hear shit ever <laughs> until somebody needs to say something because it's necessary for handling a capture or defense or something like that. Um, but you're, you're, you get, again, your number one goal is to herd your cats. Make sure that they have transportation to get to the next base. You know, pull a galaxy. If you're not comfortable flying, call for somebody else in your squad to do so. Same thing with Sunders. Make sure people have transportation. Make sure beacons are up. Make sure people are able to get where they need to be. As far as organizing your squads with specific, you know, this many heavies, this many medics, things like that, in the public platoons, you really don't need to do that because you're not going to get the cohesion that you want there. If you can, you know, ask somebody, hey, we need a couple more medics. Can anybody switch? Or we could use a couple infills here. Can anybody switch? That's fine, but you're not going to get the cohesion. That's a very good point. That's a very good point. People get bored and they start chattering away. But, I mean, really, if it gets to the point where nobody can hear the platoon lead, that is a problem. Whether people are busy or not, people need to be able to hear the platoon lead and respond to that. And you as a squad leader, if you see, you know, a conversation going on with people in your squad in platoon chat or even in squad chat, if it's getting to be too loud, too uncontrolled, just calm it down a little bit. That's all you have to do. Any questions so far? Yeah, absolutely. That's another good point. That's something that I have done. Um, you know, when, when I'm running a platoon or a squad and we're kind of bored on a point, you take that opportunity to do some training. You know, we're in a tech plant. Nothing going on. We're getting no resistance. But, guys, this is important. Normally, if we were getting resistance, I would position squads here and here and here, make sure people are where they're supposed to be. Use the opportunity to train people. But that's a lot on the PL, too, that, you know, if things are bored not much is going on. Take that opportunity to train people and teach people things. And you as a squad leader can absolutely do the same thing. Within your squad, you know, take them around the tech plant. Show them where to stand on the balcony, not to go outside. Show them where to guard, guard the rabbit hole. You know, make sure you watch the suicides, the grinders, things like that. Show them where things are and help people learn how to position themselves. You know, even if it's within your own squad, just teach something. SKL is very much about the new player experience, so you're going to have a lot of people in your squads and platoons that have no idea what they're doing. They're fresh off the boat. Teach them. Give them knowledge. Teach them how to do things right, and it'll last, and people will come back again and again and again and again. The reason people keep coming back to this game is because of the leadership of the game. It's the great platoons that are run where we have a lot of fun, you know, we win alerts, we get things done, we have a blast. That's why people keep coming back. People don't come back for, really necessarily, the game itself. They like the group activities, you know, they like the friends, they like the relationships here. That's why people keep coming back. And leadership is a major part of why people keep coming back. Like I said, I've played this game for three years, and FPS games are not my thing. This is literally the only one that I play. I've dipped in a couple others, but I'm not interested in those. But I stay here because of the great leadership. Because of the platoons that I've been in with Rage and with Yami and Kidney and Sokar and just these great events that happen. You know, whether it's, you know, pulling an armor column or, you know, Sokar used to like to run medics with knives out. And then say, oh, let's go! <laughs> Throw your bodies on the point. You know, fun stuff like that that the leadership organizes and makes happen. That's why people keep coming back to that game. And as squad leaders, you are an important part of that. You're leading your squad, you're passing these things on, you know, you're making sure that your squad has fun too. And before you take that step into platoon leading, if you can master that as a squad lead, that's a good step. Learn how to be a help to the platoon lead. Learn how you might be draining on a platoon lead. Not doing, you know, things to assist that, that platoon lead. And not all platoon leaders are going to want as involved of, of a squad lead as, as others do. Some of them are just like, whatever, you're just another person in their platoon. They don't care. But even so, do your best to be an asset. You know, you see something important being taken. Hey, PL, you want me to take my squad over to reinforce, you know, Indarcom? Because it looks like one squad will, will turn the tide. Things like that. Just assist the platoon leader. Even if they're not looking for that kind of thing, assist them. Because they'll appreciate it in the long run. It's a great thing as a platoon leader 
to have squad leaders that you know will handle things that you can send anywhere to do anything and they'll just they'll handle it no question or they'll keep you posted for whatever reason they can't or you know it's extra eyes on the map too and platoon leaders love that kind of stuff any questions Oh, for sure, my absolutely. You know, it, when the platoon is not going to catch everything on the map. You know, they have to watch the entire map. They have to try and predict what the NC and TR are doing. They have to figure out, you know, in command what allies are doing. They've got five million things to watch. So if you, as a squad lead, can keep an eye, can learn number one the important bases and keep an eye on them, especially if you know the platoon lead sent you to cap a base or defend a base and then pulled you back, and you see that base is going down again. You know, hey, PL, Indarcom's going down again. You want me to go pop over there with my squad and handle it? They're going to love that kind of stuff. They love it. They absolutely love it when you're thinking ahead like that. As a squad leader, um, I can tell you that I keep a document on my desktop with my favorite platoon leader's squad descriptions. So I don't have to ask them. I can just copy and paste it in there. As a platoon leader, that makes people feel great. I love it when people have my squad description already ready to go. I can put them as a squad lead and you need the description. Nope, I got it. It's open. Makes me as a platoon lead feel great. I highly recommend as a squad leader, but something you want to do long term, copy and paste your favorite platoon leader squad descriptions. It's just another connection to them. <laughs> yes, Kara. <laughs> it, I love it, I love it. <laughs> it keeps things easy. It saves you time. It saves them time. It just streamlines, streamlines things. Um, as a squad leader, you should have your squad cert set up, all of your smokes, your offensive requests. If you can't afford much with um, your certs, you're newer, you're starting out, I highly encourage you to get those before you really start out much of anything if you really are serious about leadership, because those things are so important. They're essential when battles get heavy and everything, and on the previous platoon I was just in with Blood Brio, he was calling out for offensive request that stuff helps turn the tides of battles and if you don't have it that kind of it's a little bit of a drain on the platoon leader I highly encourage you to get those squad certs completely filled out yeah slim smoking sundays is amazing um I can heal you. you can use your squad waypoint your platoon waypoint but the only people that can see that are people in your platoon that's it put smoke on it the entire faction sees it. so your allies will go and flood to that sunder as well. Um, I smoke routers, I smoke beacons, I smoke anywhere that enemies are coming from. So allies can flood it as I'll well. It and it's not just our platoon. That's... You'll get you know double or triple the response if you put smoke on something rather than using a waypoint. It's a lot more effective. The enemy can see the, the smoke for a split second though still, right? That's still a thing? Yeah, they can see it for a split second, but then it goes away. But by then the damage is already done. We'll know where it is. I can heal you. So if you're new to squad leading, and you've never opened a squad before, when somebody asks you to be a squad lead, the way that you open up the squad is you make sure that the private squad box is unchecked, and then to open it up, you have to put a description is in. You can hit enable recruitment, but if there's no description there, it won't actually do it. And it has a minimum letter or something. It's like four, six letters or something that have to be in there, so you can't just put SKL. Um, but again, that comes back to, you know, copying your favorite platoon leader's squad descriptions or, you know, SKL public platoon, if there isn't a particular one, is fine too. And you paste it there, and then you hit enable recruitment after that. And again, you know, if, if platoons are switching hands, then you do the same thing. You disable recruitment, you change the description to whatever it needs to be, and then you hit enable. And then your squad is open for people to join in the squad finder. So that's the only way that it shows up there. You must have a description and you must have recruitment enabled with the private squad box unchecked. Horace, you got anything to add here? Get 
Alright everybody, it's me about an hour later or so after the training. Uh, messed up with the mic a little bit there, so I'm gonna do this really quickly. Basically all I was saying there was how to make a squad, and uh, I'm just gonna go over that really quick. And essentially what you're gonna wanna do, if you are creating a squad on your own, you're gonna go to this social tab, you're going to press create squad, uh, take special note of this tip here that you have to have at least two members in your squad to list it publicly. Um, so you're going to create your squad with that button. You can turn off the private squad as that opens up this description box. I can't click it until I uncheck that. So I'm going to uncheck the private squad. I can call it uh, whatever I want. and. Uh, when you have a second member in your squad, you will be able to hit Enable Recruitment after you have a description, and then you are, will be good to go, and it will show up in the, uh, in the Squad Finder, because you will have two people, and you will have been able to hit Enable Recruitment with your description. And then there's a couple of other things that I can mention while I'm here, a bit more in-depth. You can turn Auto Platoon on or off, and basically what that does is, if you have more than 12 members in your squad, uh, it will automatically file the next person, the 13th person in your in your uh, member list, into Bravo. Um, which is kind of nice if uh, you want to make a platoon, um, and you know don't want to forget to throw someone to Bravo before you end up having 12. Um, but sometimes it's nice to just make sure that you like you drag someone to Bravo so you can set them as Bravo lead, um, and you know they want to lead Bravo. Um, personally, I like to have it off for that reason, but if you want to keep it on, you can. And then the other thing I want to talk about is auto recruit, and I'll leave it there so you can read the tip. And it does exactly what it says. It just uh, makes it so that people don't even have to go to your squad finder. Players who have auto recruit, uh, recruit on in their settings, which will be in this general settings, auto droid squad on login. Players who have that on will auto join a squad um, that has that option on as well. Uh, so if you want players to come in as soon as they log in who have that option on, make sure that's on as well. And then the mentor squad, uh, I don't recommend having this on unless you plan on actually mentoring people and teaching people about the game because the mentor squad tends to file players in who are uh, low battle rank and stuff like that um, just because that that's that was the whole intention. Um, it's nice to, for directives and stuff too but be aware that it is going to file a lot of low, low battle rank players in. So there you go and uh, back to the main content of this video now. Thank you very much. No worries. Yes, Gade, good point. The padlock um, on your UI on the front where it shows Alpha Squad, Delta, Bravo Squad, Charlie, Delta, whatever, right next to your mini-map, it'll show green when it's unlocked. It'll show red and the padlock is turned like it's locked. And if that's the case, your squad is locked. So if you hop into a squad and you notice, hey, your squad's locked, is something that your squad lead, they don't answer, say something your platoon lead, chances are you're going to get made squad lead, open it up, and roll. Yeah, a lot of people don't realize you need to have that description in there. You can't just flip it on and think it's on. You have to have a description for it to be open. Yeah, I'm pretty sure in the Discord somewhere there's a list of common uh, squad descriptions somewhere with the SKL public, you know, SKL armor, whatever. I'm sure it's listed somewhere. I couldn't tell you off the top of my head where it is right now, but I'm sure it's there somewhere. But again, you know, platoon leads have their squad descriptions that they want to use. I personally use Kasami's Conquerors. Horus, what do you use? Really? We gotta talk about that. But yeah, everybody's got their, their own. Back in the day, Rage had farming farmers. Um, uh, I forget what so everybody else's was, but everybody's got their personal ones, pretty much. Mine is um, SKL for Legion. If you guys, if you guys are looking out. One I'm on deck. Okay, well, I think I'm done with my portion of the theory of squad leading for this training.
Uh, Horace, you want to take it over and, and roll? 